Hello and welcome to your weekly music fix here on France 24. I'm Marjorie Hash and my guest today is an American music producer who since 2004 has been at the helm of Hercules and Love Affair, a dance project that broke into mainstream consciousness at the end of that decade with their new disco track, Blind. This week, Hercules and Love Affair are back with their fifth studio album and first record in five years. Well, thank you so much, uh, Andy Butler, for joining me in the France 24 studio. Thank you very much, Marjorie, for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. I love your new album. Uh, it's called In Amber, and it's full of lots of layers. There's lots of dark uh, pop, dark folk. There's also a bit of a industrial gothy tones, if I may say. Uh, it's definitely a departure from your previous sound. And I know that several years ago, you moved to Ghent in Belgium from, yeah. well, you were in uh, Vienna before and also in New York before that. Um, I was wondering, how does geography play or influence your music, if at all? What a wonderful question. And I could go on for our entire interview talking about <laughs> it, but I definitely won't. Uh -huh. um, uh, the cities I've lived in have definitely informed the music I've made. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could hear it on the debut, the de debut album. New York City was definitely uh, very present on my first record. Mm -hmm. I was loving disco music. I was loving house music. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I moved to, to Europe, as you said, Vienna. I started working with more techno-oriented producers there. Um, and I was around a lot of classicism, preserved beautiful buildings, much more history. Uh, as the U.S. is such a young country. Um, and then Ghent, Belgium, I ended up in a medieval city, <laughs> in a city full of cobblestone streets and like beautiful, stunning art and um, an esoteric tradition of surrealism. And all of that stuff definitely influenced and informed the, the new record, which, as you said, is a bit darker. And um, yeah, it, environment has absolutely in, in, Formed my musical journey. Mm. And Love This Record was uh, features your long-term collaborator and friend Anoni, yeah. uh, formerly known as Anthony and the Johnsons. Uh, can you tell us in a nutshell how you became friends in the first place, but also um, what's your songwriting process like together? Uh, well, so we met over a very humble dinner. Uh, it was a meeting of four mutual friends uh, who, became, who became mutual friends. And um, you know, we did that New York thing where we went around the table and asked each other, oh, what do you do? One of those very New York questions. Mm -hmm. And Anoni at the time just said to me, uh, she said, I'm a singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, subsequently I heard her voice. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, the next time I saw her, I went up to her and said, you're not just a singer. Mm -hmm. You're much more than just a singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, sort of, I must have mentioned Elizabeth Fraser from the Cocteau Twins in that mm -hmm. conversation saying how much it moved me to hear her voice and how it evoked Elizabeth Fraser on some level. And she loves Elizabeth Fraser. We became incredible friends because of that over a musical bond, mm -hmm. as many of my friendships seem to. And um, yeah, we started collaborating after uh, years of friendship. Um, and she takes you out of your comfort zone. Oh, she does. You're linear and does. she'll go all over the place. Shh, I, it, I think that is a really good way of putting it. I tend to be a more linear, perhaps traditionalist in my songwriting structures. And uh, Anoni is very much a creator who I think taps into the spontaneity, spontaneity of the moment, uh, pursued improvisation throughout her education, and really has this ability to channel and yeah, be in the moment in a way many artists just don't. Uh, well, let's be in the moment right now with a look at your beautiful video for the track, Grace, where you're actually singing. I am. This is true. <laughs> if you look for Grace Your 
the track you can find on a new Hercules and Love Affair album in Amber. Uh, now, Andy, this album, as we were saying, was a lot darker than the previous one. There's a huge feeling of, of um, redemption in this track in particular, I hope. And um, well, what mood were you in when you were working on, on this album? Um, oh, there were many moods. Mm -hmm. This record was, it took about five years to make the entirety of this album. Uh, and we went through a lot of things in the past five years. Mm -hmm. So I went through a lot of moods, as I think we all went through a lot of moods in the past five years. Um, but specifically with a song like Grace, for instance, um, one of the things that I really looked to and uh, have been pursuing in my life is a, a, a path of, yeah, spiritual path of some sort. So meditation practices, um, a sense of examining, examining my existence and trying to find comfort and a, a, a sense of being in this world was a very important um, part of my journey in the past five years. So a lot of contemplation, learning contemplation techniques and meditation and those kinds of things inform songs like Grace. Mm -hmm. And you've also got, like, there's a lot of um, uh, t themes in this album, like uh, human condition, uh, position within the family, which I think a lot of people have difficulty with sometimes. Uh, there's expectations by society, uh, patriarchal oppression. It, we could go on. It's very, very uh, full on. Um, was it something you did consciously when you started writing this album to, to go on to those themes? Or uh, Definitely. I think, well, those, I, I follow my nose as an artist. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, I, and, and my art is definitely uh, just an expression of where I am and what I'm going through. So I think it is fair to say those were things I was, you know, examining and lived, living through. And uh, Anoni, for her, on her part, mm -hmm. you know, the songs that she uh, wrote lyrics for and contributed, they definitely dealt with some of the heavier topics, um, which was sort of a continuation from work she had been doing in 2015 with hopelessness. Mm -hmm. She was engaging much more politically. She was engaging um, in a much more direct way with some with some some matters of. Uh, intense, yeah, world affairs and such. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think what's also interesting is you've got also a number of other collaborators, uh, notably Icelandic singer Ellen A. If I'm pronouncing that right, but also I was super excited to read this punk drummer Budgie, who's worked with uh, Suitsy and the Banshees and also the Slits. Um, tell me a bit about how that collaboration came up. That's true. Um, uh, Budgie was brought into the picture, uh, and then we were working on one of the more atmospheric songs. But Budgie is an incredible percussionist, as you said. He worked with this uh, Susie, with and, the Susie and the Slits, mm -hmm. uh, and is very versatile. He had a side project with Susie called The Creatures. Mm -hmm. Anoni was very much a fan, and mm -hmm. uh, one of the atmospheric tracks. And he said it would be great to have a, a sort of percussion exploration from Budgie on this. I said, oh, I happen to know Budgie mm -hmm. because he drums for the, uh, John Grant, a oh, singer yeah. who appeared on my third album. Mm -hmm. So I contacted another one of my collaborators who put me in touch with Budgie, and he just happened to be, uh, along with being phenomenally expressive and creative uh, and signature in his drum style, a beautiful human being who uh, I am now touring with. Fantastic. And yeah. a tour to come, dates to be announced still. Dates at this to be announced. And we're excited to see that. And especially if you're getting Budgie on, that's an extra reason to come and see you. Yeah. <laughs> How about we uh, take a look now at some other new uh, sounds that the world has to offer. Uh, first up, a track that I've had on heavy rotation. It's Franco-Ethiopian band Kutu, uh, who formed in Addis Abeba a couple of years ago and combined traditional tribal rhythms with jazzy punk energy. The band is composed of French violinist Théo Cisaldi, Sekaldi, should I say, and singers Ewanji World, uh, Hela Yuya, and Tzadik. This track is called Bamet Bil. <laughs> And that was the lovely band Kutu that I recommend. You can catch them on June 24th at La Défense's Jazz Festival, as well as throughout France at a number of other music uh, adventures. Uh, they'll be also be playing Paris's Maroquinerie this autumn. Um, any uh, musical discoveries that you've uh, liked in particular recently? Oh, um, I, I, you know, I living in Belgium, uh, I, I 
I got a bit immersed in the history of kind of outsider pop music from mm -hmm. Belgium. There was a so I learned a lot about a certain label called Le Disque de Crepuscule mm -hmm. out of Brussels uh, and crammed discs. So in the past years, two years, I've been heavy into mm -hmm. the discography of this sort of outsider pop, that kind of uh, a tradition of this that they have in Belgium. So I've been listening to quite a bit of that. Yeah, and you seem to fit well with it, I, I think. <laughs> um, over to actually an international French band who definitely not outsiders, they're called Phoenix, and uh, they're back with their new track called Alpha Zulu. It preempts the arrival of their first album in five years. They've just played Primavera Sounds and will be touring the US in September before returning to Europe. Here's a glimpse of their funny video. Thank you to them. <laughs> Definitely dancing to that Alpha Zulu by Phoenix there. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Andy Butler, for coming on the show. Uh, remember, the new Hercules and Love Affair album in Amber is out this week. France 24's news is coming up in just a few minutes, which gives me just enough time to remind you to log on to our website, france24.com, for all your culture news. And of course, follow us, Encore, uh, that's at Encore F24 on social media. We're going to play out with uh, new, another new release by Lass, a Senegalese artist based in the French city of Lyon, who will enchant you with his beautiful voice. This is taken from his first album, Boumaillet.